everyone. Welcome to ICC's Game of the Week with your host, as always, Joel Benjamin. Last week, as we enjoyed that spectacular game by Wei Yi, I pointed out that Wang Yue was actually the winner of the Danju tournament. So this week, we will see a quite different approach as Wang steers the game past potential complications into a technical ending, concluding with a beautiful problem-like resource. All this done against the Chinese number one, Ding Liren. Okay, so let's have a look. Wang Yue, definitely a different type of player than Wei Yi, much more of a technician. But the game starts out fairly sharp. As Ding goes for King's Indian, he's, well, one of the top players in the world that is not afraid to go into this opening. There aren't really that many on the, on the highest levels. And so Wang Yue plays something we don't see all that often. Uh, most of the Grandmaster games, I would say, would be either some kind of G3 against the Kings Indian or the standard main line with Knight F3 instead of Bishop G5. So this is the Averback system, uh, totally violating the rule about knights before bishops. But the idea is that uh, black is discouraged from playing E5 because this runs into a trade and knight d5. So this is a very specific reason for this particular development. So e5 is out. Black can play knight bd7 if he has some ideas of playing e5 later. But generally, black answers with c5. He can play h6 first or c5 right away. And as in many Kings Indians and all also, we see this idea in the in the Pierce defense. If D takes C5, the idea is Queen A5, and uh, not only attacking the pawn with the queen, but also menacing Knight takes E4 using the pin. And uh, then White usually plays Bishop back to D2. This that was many years ago briefly popular for White playing a Maroxi bind type of position, but losing a little bit of time with the pieces. Okay, so d5 was played, the usual stuff. We head towards a Benoni structure. And generally, white in this position plays queen d2. We see in the king's Indian very often when the, the dark squared bishop is, is developed early, we see the queen d2 following up to give some extra protection to cover the h6 square. Although in a lot of situations, black is able to play h6 nonetheless. But... Um, this is the, the usual way to play, and Wang Yue instead plays knight f3, and I, I've never actually seen anybody do that in, in, in this position. It, um, it transposes into a, an entirely different thing after takes, takes, and h6. Now we get a position that is normally arrived at from the modern Benoni move order with an early bishop g5. But generally these variations with a very bi early bishop g5 are not considered that dangerous for black. Because um, when the bishop retreats to h4, the big key for black is to take out that bishop. That dark sword bishop is a very important piece in this structure. As you look at the pawns, white has these pawns on light squares, so the light squared bishop is blocked. But uh, both dark squared bishops are able to move freely in this structure and white's dark squared bishop is a very good piece and when it disappears the um, the black dark squared bishop increases in strength but if black does not uh, does not hurry then white is playing to play knight d2 and normally if white gets that move in and that preserves the bishop he gets that move in with the, the dark squared bishop outside already developed, then he usually has a, a clear advantage. So black, it behooves black to go for the bishop here with knight h5. And this is a, a pretty benign form of it because a lot of times when black goes after that bishop, he might have to consent to a check on b5 or a check on a4 that might interfere with